हेलो सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द फोर्टीन लेक्चर ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम निकला मैं ऑडिबल निखिल आर यू यस प्रोफेसर ओके सो टुडे इज फोकस इज द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ फाइल स्ट्रक्चर टाइप्स एट्रीब्यूट्स एंड लॉकिंग एंड एक्सेस मेथड्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्पेसिफिकली कवर सम ऑफ द एग्जांपल्स ऑफ फाइल टाइप्स देन द मेजर एट्रीब्यूट्स ऑपरेशंस लॉकिंग एंड द एक्सेस मेथड्स देन वी विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ द Uh, very fine questions. Those are related to all these concepts. So, starting with the, the file structure and types, and uh, as we are supposed to study all these things uh, with respect to some operating system, so we have considered the case of Linux. The most important thing that uh, because of its open sourceness, uh, it's available free of cost, and uh, additionally, it's uh, so available in so wide forms, so that accordingly, according to your requirement, means so you can use Linux. In a variety of environments. Okay, so Linux uh, is a very well-known and popular choice. And uh, in Linux, when we discuss the concept of files, then file is uh, considered means everything means every object in Linux is considered to be a kind of file. So that is stored in a file sort of structure inside system, and that's why you can easily, if you understand the concept of file and the related attributes, then it's a uh, mm, really to understand each and every notion of the linux file system so here uh, means i do have the directory structures also but those are also considered a kind of special files so that we will discuss later in this uh, particular lecture only so basically there are three types uh, one is the ordinary or the kind of regular files so those are supposed to be the kind of normal excel file uh, or your word processing files or kind of uh, different Uh, application software files so as we do know that there are a wide number of utilities those are supposed to get used by user uh, based on their uh, specific uh, use and the future interpretations with respect to any specific data and then uh, those uh, all kinds of files are supposed to get stored inside your memory in the form of some uh, particular extension format so all those files are supposed to belong to the first category because uh, those are uh means uh, their behavior their content or the kind of relationship existing between the all elements of that particular file is supposed to be well known so you do know that if it's uh, an excel file then uh, there will be some sort of numerical value there will be some sort of mathematical functions working behind the interpretation and the analysis so in this way when the functionality or the behavior of a file is already well known that automatically becomes a part of ordinary file then second one is the kind of special files because there is a particular motive behind it and that is not kind of ordinary file so in normal use cases that you don't see means in normal discussions and normal file handling we do not encounter these sorts of files so that's why those are supposed to belong to a different category called special file and third one is the directory as i told you earlier also that everything is considered in the form of file only in the so that's why directories are supposed to be a kind of special type of file only so here is belonging to the first category discussion uh, we are supposed to discuss that uh, what are the different types so in the last lecture also we discussed that there are different media types or text types or kind of uh, image files so everything that is in the form of text data or kind of a program instruction because uh, normally uh files are supposed means if you define the criteria on the basis of type of data then we can divide the files based on in two category broadly one is data file second is your program file so that's why here text data or the program instructions are supposed to get stored within ordinary files and uh, obviously the common files those are supposed to be means the most commonly used uh, whether your word processing file or is some sort of uh, means uh, we can consider 
because uh, in some situations the system files are also be used extensively because if you are going to use some system file extensively for a specific purpose again and again uh, so you might consider that it is also has become ordinary but it's not special for you means it's a kind of ordinary for you because you are using it again and again but it's not ordinary for every so if some specific or some high profile means a programmer or coder is using a specific uh, dll file or system file then it doesn't uh, uh, mean that uh, that particular file has become a kind of ordinary files for a layman user also so that's why from a uh, layman user perspective we see then all these categories are supposed to get formed so in this way the uh, readable files kind of binary files image files compressed files even binary files people do not consider most of the users do not consider binary files also as the part of ordinary files but still those are supposed to have some sort of numerical data zero one form so that's why again text data kind of things so, so that's why those are supposed to get stored uh, means those are supposed to belong to ordinary kind of category now the second category that is of uh, special files so in this we have the block files block files kind of uh, you must have heard of the concept of device drivers okay so when we do have the device drivers then device drivers role is uh, to connect your device in a efficient manner to your system so that uh, based on the instructions those are provided by the respective users your device could actually function in real time now it might be the case that uh, your device driver is outdated or it is not uh, supporting the new hardware due to some other reason non compatibility or kind of some malicious or malignness has come inside your driver due to some bug or virus so in that case you are supposed to either run some sort of troubleshooting program or kind of you need to replace your existing version of device driver so then uh, you will replace that driver but how those drivers are supposed to discuss all sorts of detail with your machine so block files become that particular way block files help you to communicate with your device drivers with your file system additionally when you have a, and the kind of buffer mechanism inside your system so these sorts of files provide you that kind of functionality to have the buffered access to the system hardware components because every hardware or the software components helps to manage the buffer means some sorts of advanced space that you manage with respect to each hardware device because there might be a uh, in synchronization uh, between your processor and the device and that is obvious as i have told you earlier due to mechanical and the electronic device differences okay so in terms of speed now if devices are not compatible you are supposed to use the buffer kind of concept so this becomes possible because of your block files then you can transfer the large block of data or information at a given time okay so that might be for example you use some specific kind of uh, interface for large amount of block transfer so then the block size in memory with respect to memory also we have discussed it that word in the talk so Uh, you may define your blocks in memory and based on your block size you can transfer large amount of uh, file transfer so if you have very large file then we have also discussed the concept of dm so with respect to direct management direct memory access concept you can manage these sorts of file to have your file transfer quickly okay now we have the third sorry second category of special files that is of character files so these files uh, supports means uh, kind of uh, they help to transfer your data character by character kind of uh, people call it byte by byte also okay because in normally the character size is of one byte only so that's why character by character or byte by byte transfer is supported by these files and these provide the unbuffered serial access so serial access device you must have heard of so all those devices are supposed to interact with your system hardware with the help of these files so work uh, these files uh, work by providing a way of communication and uh, those that communication specifically belongs to the category of serial devices you might be having the multiple serial devices in a specific environment then uh, the intercommunication among uh, those devices and uh, your system that is supposed to get possible with the help of these kind of files so here uh, if uh, some device is reading some data or writing some data then these sorts of file means character by character reading or character by character writing or block by block writing or block by block reading it becomes possible because of these sorts of files so these are supposed to um, not uh, get used by a normal user means a normal user uses serial devices but he is not familiar with all these kind of um, things because 
He is supposed to just a simple, just a simply use the kind of devices only. For example, if you have installed a new operating system inside your system, then you are not bothered about its functioning. You are just only supposed to concern whether it's a working fine, whether my objective is fulfilled or not. If your system is working fine, everything is running good. You are watching a movie, then you are bothered about your movie, not about the performance of your operating system okay if a movie is not having some sorts of glitches or delay then obviously it's a totally fine part. doesn't matter what is happening behind so similar way users are do you oh, yeah uh, sure. device drivers are required both for like, external hardware like say camera on a laptop yes. also requires some extra software to communicate with yes. the Oh, okay. Uh, nowadays, actually, most of the devices carry their own uh, driver. So as soon as you plug in those kind of uh, devices, the driver automatically gets in to the system contact and the operating system loads that driver. So many times you might have seen because uh, when you plug a fresh device, fresh means in the sense uh, for the very first time. If you are plugging in uh, a new device for the very first time in your system, then system automatically shows some blog means some pop-ups and uh, it shows many times it shows a wizard and it asks you that whether you want to store these files uh, whether the, the driver means uh, this particular device is supposed to take data from whether you are supposed to store your output files what sorts of uh, uh, custom uh, management or the automatic management means and management means in the sense of installation so it gives you the option of whether to have the automatic installation or the kind of custom installation. So if you go for the custom installation inside that, you can have various kinds of options depending on the device characteristics. And then you can go for a specific installation. But if you don't want to bother about the kind of installation, just to go for the automatic choice and it will complete the task of driver installation. So with respect to means earlier devices, like 10 to 15 years ago, means uh, at that time the drivers were not kind of part of hardware devices. So you were supposed to download the dedicated or the related drivers from the respective website and then you are supposed to install all those things. Earlier if you see then before Windows 7 also means uh, drivers were not part of uh, Windows. So you were supposed to separately download or have a CD of uh, drivers and then you are supposed to install. So when you used to go for uh, OS purchase then uh, two three different uh, accessories means in the form of CDs, those were supposed to get supplied to you because you have a whole bunch of driver CDs and then you used to install every keyboard driver, then mouse driver means input or output kind of so keyboard mouse then uh, used to come in a single CD form only, then audio driver, video driver, LAN driver, and then your motherboard driver. So all these sorts of then uh, slowly, slowly multimedia became very important. So multimedia drivers came into picture, different sorts of different versions of multimedia files came in. So and all those drivers became heavy, heavier, heavier. And now we are seeing the more heavier form of all these drivers. Because uh, so many new extensions, so many new forms of different media files are coming uh, nowadays. And those are continuously getting updated because of uh, means requirement of the time, because the data is more and you are supposed to store it in a specific form that is uh, more complex and that is more clear. So in this form, then Blu-ray and all these things and new, new technologies are coming. So slowly, slowly, as the drivers will go on change, it will go on improvement. Uh, in the same way, your device drivers will go on improvement. And as the device driver gets updated, you are supposed to mean your system is supposed to get updated in terms of drivers. Otherwise, the new files will not get a support from your system side. So specifically, these files means whenever you connect a driver or the device with your system, then these files help you to communicate that driver means that hardware to your machine because a driver is a kind of interface only. It's a, it allows the means a bidirectional communication between your machine and the device. So these files help in that particular kind of communication. Because with respect to every hardware operation, there is supposed to be some sorts of mm, software support. So device driver and uh, these sorts of files help to manage that software soft, software support part component. Okay. Now uh, we are supposed to discuss some other special files. So the another category is uh, of symbolic link files. So these files point to other files as the name 
itself is conveying the message that symbolic link means that there is supposed to be a kind of a reference point okay so that is supposed to point to other files so that's why the name is like symbolic link files so these files they have the kind of references so if you have the good management of references good management of your addresses inside your system then obviously it's uh, uh, means that there is no need to discuss this point because you do know that if you have the good uh, pointer management good reference management inside your system then your system is supposed to work in an efficient way so these kind of files help you to manage your system efficiently because these are supposed to work behind the picture uh, and uh, those are supposed to complement your system's performance in a positive note okay then socket files so socket files means uh, as the socket uh, we discussed with that socket is a kind of combination of ip address and the port number okay so with respect to socket number means socket uh, specific socket with respect to any process you are supposed to have the communication with other process so when there is a discussion of two process then it is inter process communication when you have the kind of uh, one machine to another machine then it's a kind of inter machine communication so here you can have uh, means uh, the context that is running on different machines that might also be the scenario if the two context two different contexts are running on the same machine that is also a possible scenario so that's why your socket files means kind of uh, mechanism that is supposed to provide you the uh, ability to have the kind of communication possible between two different or two same processes two same type processes on a same machine or on different machines so socket files will just help you to have that communication possible okay and again it is not of use of a general user so that's why it is not part of ordinary file category it's a part of special file category and in addition to these things you also might have some other more categories okay in terms of dll file is specific it means what kind of dll files or kind of uh, system files you are supposed to have is special binary files if you have your system supports uh, those kind of binary files so in every system if you go for lots of file types you have okay you just type for uh, means uh, if you go for the you use wildcard characters inside your system search box and you Uh, are good in searching then you may explore that how many different types of files are present inside your system even your system will not respond fast because that many files are present inside your system so searching will take time uh, it will show 10 minutes 5 minutes 2 minutes okay so that many files your system is keeping but uh, how many files we are supposed to encounter on daily basis we are supposed to encounter only very few means uh, if uh, normally i say then it's uh, just 2 uh, to 4% of the total file population that is present in our system so we are supposed to encounter with very less number of files those are supposed to be inside our system and that's why we are supposed to uh, have very limited knowledge in terms of file system and the files because in daily life we are not bothered about uh, that uh, whether which type of file system my system is using and dfs pet or something like that okay then what is the version of pet we are never bothered about this thing the only thing we are bothered about whether my task is being done or not and it's uh, not wrong also because a common person uh, why he is supposed to have all this sort of knowledge if every person is supposed to have this sort of knowledge then everybody is expert and uh, expert obviously takes time means to learn and to grasp everything okay so people do understand their need they do perform their task if there is some issue then they do uh, have kind of updation and everything so that particular category where the normal user or layman user belongs to and everything so that is associated with him is done that is ordinary file category another category that is supposed to perform a specific or a special task that is the another special file category and third one is the directory so directory normally is not supposed to be considered equal to file why because directory is a collection of files it's not a file itself so that's why inside a directory first of all you need to create a file then okay tell me what is the basic difference between a file and directory why do we have two terms uh, directory is a kind of folder in linux okay so what is the difference between a file and folder um, a folder has multiple files in it okay so uh, can we have direct editing inside folder without having any file it's not possible obviously 
So firstly, you have to create some file. Then only you can write something. You can edit something. Okay, you can uh, append something or truncate something. So in this way, directories are not operational without any file support. So that's why those are supposed to also means indirectly those are dependent on files. So you may have the kind of logic that yes, we are supposed to have files. But uh, inside directory, we may have another directory. Yes, you can have. But that is of no use if you don't have any file inside your uh, that uh, indexed or the kind of tree structure. Means ultimately in the directory structure, you need to have some file. Otherwise, what is the point of maintaining that particular branch of that uh, whole hierarchy? So that whole hierarchy is of no use if you don't, uh, don't have the uh, actual files at the leaf nodes. Of that particular whole tree structure. Okay, so that's why directories are also supposed to be considered as a um, special file in your Linux system, and uh, those are supposed to store the ordinary and the special file. Means directories only purpose is just folders only purpose is just to manage your files efficiently. Because if you categorize everything, if you classify things, and then you arrange all those things like you arrange your daily clothes and uh, everything. Okay, so similar way, if you just uh, don't have any sort of management, just to throw everything here and there, it's become almost impossible to find things out. Okay, so similar way, directories help you out to have quick search. So that's why efficient uh, directory structure making efficient uh, uh, kind of tree uh, maintenance is possible because of directory only. If you don't have this sort of structure, it's not possible to have efficient search inside your system. So in Linux, you have a particular root directory that is supposed to be designated by a slash forward slash. Okay. So uh, your basic uh, means your Linux file system starts from that particular root directory. Okay. So moving forward, we are now supposed to discuss the second module of this focus, and that is file attributes. And so we also discussed in last lecture that what is the meaning of attributes. So they define the different characteristics of your particular object. If a file is here, the object, then those are supposed to discuss the different characteristics or the properties of a particular file. So here, uh, when we are taking the example of Linux, so with respect to Linux, it means what, what are the different kind of properties that are supposed to be possible. So we are just taking uh, simple properties only because uh, if you again go for the kind of properties, what is the name, size, and all, those are very general. Okay. We are supposed to have just three common properties because this these properties are related with your next uh, module focus that is uh, access control. So when you have specific properties with respect to a particular file, using those uh, attributes, you can control the access to a particular file. So in this way, you can relate to different modules of today's focus also, as well as you will have a better understanding. Okay, so some of the uh, file attributes are here. Uh, those are listed here. So these are three main uh, file attributes. Mm -hmm. That is a read, write, and execute. So these are three permissions actually. Okay, so when we discuss these things, and then we are supposed to say that uh, attributes are kind of setting that you are supposed to have with respect to each and every file because if you don't maintain the proper settings then some unauthorized or the malicious use is possible and obviously no one wants that uh, their files are supposed to get used uh, in a malicious manner so here your read is supposed to be designated as a small r then write is small w and execute as small x okay and uh, those are supposed to get listed when you work in terminal in ubuntu then you can easily see then different sorts of properties when you will use the list command ls then it will show you uh, different uh, files those are present in the current directory but if you use ls hyphen a means to switch a that is, stands for all files then it will show you different sorts of means hidden files also. so in this way different sorts of properties you can manage but how to manage that you'll see next okay so with respect to attributes, you can manage the kind of permission means you can allow access, you can deny access. Similar way means uh, as an example, IBM compatible computers means uh, IBM series uh, X386. That series also supports uh, the kind of uh, management of MS-DOS and uh, Windows. So that is capable of having the read, write, archiving and the hidden attributes currently inside the system. Okay, so with respect to each and every system, there are different sorts of uh, different attributes. So those are possible. Because ultimately, your hardware and software, that combination uh, 
means based on that combination of your system programmer decides that what sorts of properties and all those things are supposed to get required. Okay. And specifically your context is always important. So file attributes in Linux. So in Unix like operating systems like uh, Linux we do are considering. So change mode means a ch mode uh, is a command that is used to change or set permissions of different files. So those are available inside your system. Okay. So the format, the syntax is like this, ch mod, and uh, there are some options means in the form of switches, and uh, then you can set the permissions. Okay, those permissions means read, write, or execute permissions. Three are we are considering just for example here. Okay, and then you are supposed to give the specific file name. So what are the permissions? So as I told you that uh, with respect to means uh, using these permissions, you can control the access to all your files means with respect to each file, you are supposed to define the access separately. But yes, if you want to change arbitrarily over the period of time, you are supposed to, means you are free. You are supposed, you are not supposed to take the whole sole decision again that you are supposed to change the every file uh, settings. The, the only file you are supposed to change, you can go and you can easily change it through terminal. So here, there are three basic groups. One is the kind of owner means uh, somebody created a particular file. So obviously his rights might be different. And if uh, somebody is a kind of guest user, so his rights might be different because, and obviously it should be because uh, if you are the owner of file, your control should be more. Okay. So you should have better control over a file than a guest user. Similar way, if there is a group, you are doing kind of assignment, you have uh, shared a particular file. So a group has a kind of uh, hold on a particular kind of files. And uh, then like you share your Google Docs over uh, net. So in similar way means different sorts of sharing and all those things it means uh, there is a context where we do need group setting. Okay. And additionally, if we want to share just some other person that is not the uh, original owner as well as he's not part of group. So then there is a category that belongs to anyone else that is others. Okay, so normally three uh, these kind of uh, users are supposed to be inside your system. The actual owner, that is user, the group means for a particular kind of group, and third one is the other, it's kind of guest user. Okay, and uh, there are two specific ways to represent these uh, permissions. You can use means uh, alphanumeric characters, or you can go for the octal numbers. So here you can see that. Here we have uh, some basic operations. It means uh, the attributes of the files we will, I'll give you an example in coming slides very in detail while having the discussion of uh, file access, because I told you that file permissions are helping to manage the file access. So in the file access uh, section, we'll discuss all those things in detail. Now, before discussing that particular uh, part means access, you are supposed to discuss the operations. Why? Because without having operation support, you cannot control access. Means to have a better access control inside your system, you are supposed to manipulate uh, different operations. You are supposed to go through a particular list of operations. So uh, here, these are some of the very basic operations. I will not say that these are the all operations or uh, these are the all sorts of possible hybrid forms of the operations. These are very basic operations and using these operations, you can create most of the tasks, those are present with respect to a particular file system. Okay. So here you'll create a file, you'll read a file, edit, modify, then you can move or copy, then you can remove the file. Then if you want to have a kind of so only one page at a time uh, display of a particular file, then you can use the command less. Then if you want to have just a first few lines of a particular text, okay, suppose 10 lines. So head command is used. So only 10 lines of a specific text will get showed. Okay. Every time. Then if you want to see the only bottom 10 lines, then tell command is there. So using these different sorts of command, you can use, you can manipulate your files in an efficient way, depending on your sole objective. Okay. So to create a particular file, there is a command that is touch means you just need to touch a particular file means, uh, uh, there is a kind of, if you want to, that is already available. Okay. It's fine. But if it is not available, you are supposed to use, I'll, uh, you are supposed to use command that is touch. And then you are supposed to give the file name. So touch file. So here the file name is file only. So file.txt. So a text file of name file will get created. 
Okay, and if you want to create multiple files, then you are just simply supposed to use the end operator. So using end operator, you can have multiple uh, file creation in a single instance. Then if you want to read the file, then again, it's a choice. Means whether you want to use a graphics process, graphics based processor means kind of a GUI uh, editor, or you want to display your file content into terminal only. So if you want to have the terminal only display, then you can use the cat command. But if you want a specific GUI support editor, then you can use some editor like Nano. Okay, so you can go for Nano, you can go for Gedit, or these kinds of supports are available. Okay, multiple GUI editor supports are already there. So VI, etc. those are present. Then if you want to edit, so obviously first you need to open the file. So use some editor like Nano is used here. So Nano will open the file and then you can edit it and then control S means save it. So then uh, copy, move, copy means you just need to make an, another copy. Uh, anybody can tell me the difference between copy and move. What is the difference between move, moving a file and copying a file? Copy retains the file in its original location and move doesn't. Yes. Fine. And uh, obviously, you also need to mention that uh, when you are copying, so two copies will be there in the system in total. And uh, in case of move, there is always a single copy only. So obviously, after a movement, it will be a destination location. Only. Okay, fine. Your, your answer is fine. So if you want to remove, then rm command is there, short for remove. And uh, that will help you to just uh, simply delete a particular file. Okay. So these are some basic operations and you can have a kind of hybrid form of all these operations it means uh, it is not necessary that uh, if you are working on a complex work and uh, if you want to have some sort of repetitive work every day that you are supposed to, for example, there is some accountant okay, inside a form and he is supposed to open means cross check all the records. Those are available. Uh, those were managed or closed. Uh, previous day and in the morning he is supposed to come there and check all the records of whether those are all proper or there is some sorts of inconsistency in database okay so every day he is supposed to do this sort of thing only like banking people do usually they go for daily they go for their workplace and then there they are supposed to check their system first whether the database means the system stays is consistent like uh, they left with or uh, it's uh, somewhat different because there is a there might be a possibility of some hacking activity or some electrical glitches. Those are supposed to temper your data inside your map. Okay. So all these things are possible. So that's why just to prevent these things that they do have a cross-check mechanism. So this thing means a person is supposed to repeat kind of steps every day. So why not to make a batch file? So you will make a kind of batch file or a script file. And every day you are just supposed to simply run it. Okay, so you are supposed to make a file. You are just to simply run that file, and that file that file will contain all sorts of steps. So those are supposed to get repeated every day. So that script will automatically do the work. Okay, you are not supposed to write each and every command that open, then edit, or cross check, or move particular file from last day folder to this day folder. Okay, so in this way, you are supposed to create a kind of a script, and your work is over. So here, uh, moving on to the uh, last focus. So that is uh, your uh, file locking and the access method. So as we do have understood that there are some file attributes and if we have not given permission, uh, a specific kind of permission with respect to uh, a particular file, then obviously that particular file is kind of in a locking state for that particular user. Okay, so firstly, we understand that what kind of users we do have. So we have only three categories. One is the owner user, supposed to be designated as U, then group G, and other as O. Then we have three types of file control also. That is read, write, and execute. And if you want to change the access type of file, then we have three operators here, you can see. So other means the two plus minus, those are supposed to change the access type. And the third one that is equal to, that is, just simply used to designate uh, means uh, state that uh, this particular user has this sort of access. So it is not supposed to 
kind of manipulate the kind of access the user is having in a particular moment of time at some place states and other two are supposed to manipulate the kind of access so if you want to increase access plus means or increment only okay so if you want to have an increment in some users access somebody for example got promoted okay so you are supposed to increase his privileges his access rights and uh, somebody got demoted so obviously you are supposed to restrict or remove his access so that's why these two operator plus minus are supposed to be of better use inside your system then here you can see that file locking uh, and uh, access method and that is if you remember earlier we discussed that the permissions can get handled using two types of format one is the alphanumeric format second is the octal format see here here we can manage the permissions using two types of format one is the alphanumeric characters format and second is the octal format so what i am showing you here this one these are the kind of characters okay here that we are writing here r w x these are the alphanumeric characters only and what we are listing here these are the octal numbers so as we do know that the base of octal is 8 so what is the limit hmm? what is the numerical limit for octal number system 7 to 7 okay maximum limit is 7 minimum is always 0 yes for every kind of uh, number system so here for uh, octal we have 0 to 7 so here it's a binary equivalent means uh, just for the ease of understanding they have managed it like this the tree try to execute so you are supposed to remember just the binary code so if the binary code is 000 okay so then if you have the first uh, a uh, numerical value that is supposed to point to read access second is the right and third one is the execute access so rwx so you are free means uh, for a particular user you have defined that he is not supposed to read the file but he is supposed to write the file kind of a strange access but yes it might be the case okay or it might be the case that uh, most uh, common type of access is that everyone is supposed to read the file but is not supposed to write or execute the file or the third type of access that everyone is supposed to execute the file but is not supposed to read the content or write the content okay so this sorts of categories are do present means uh, for example when you go for the source code most of the companies don't open their source code so this sort of privileges are assigned that you are not supposed to edit or read the content but you are supposed to execute okay so in the similar fashion these all eight combinations are possible okay so here when you are supposed to have this number system then you are managing the file access using this octal number system so now interpret this particular notation what is the meaning tell me change mode 744 Full dot txt. anyone um only for the owner they can read write and execute yes everyone else only read only read only read yes perfect okay so here you can see that with respect to four what is the combination read only permission with respect to seven what is the permission read write and execute okay you can understand it in a different form also for example read has a weightage of 4 write has a weightage of 2 and execute has a weightage of 1 okay 1 2 4 why i am saying this because binary number system weightage is like this only means any number system has a kind of weightage this kind of 
uh, in this form only means uh, the power gets on uh, increment in this particular direction and uh, the power uh, go on decrease in this particular direction okay so that's why it's a uh, 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 1 2 to the power 2 okay so like this this binary number system is successful so here uh, or just to simply remember this thing then from here you can see that 7 is there means read is there write is there execute is there and we do know that we have the three kind of users inside the system u g and o so user group and other so here you can see that user group and other so user the owner okay it's not the simple user it is the owner so owner is supposed to have the read write as well as the execute permission means all the permissions all the access rights are available there. but with respect to a particular group they have restricted that you are supposed to have only read access no modification no execution okay so here similar for the other means the guest user moving forward we have uh, this particular formula means if you want to set the access permission for example right now means until now you have understood that what are the accesses what is the concept of access what is the need and uh, what are the different kind of values those are supposed to be in picture okay but now you want to modify the permissions you want to set the permission so how to do it okay so here you have the same command uh, chmod okay and here using change mode command you can do the users access control so users type first you need to discuss okay so change mode command using change mode command you are supposed to give the users a type and users type belongs to four categories the owner the group the other user means guest and this a is for all means if you don't want to discuss these three then discuss a a stands for all all types of users. Okay, then it is the kind of access modification operator. So, so here, if you want to just simply state the access, means this user has this access, then just simply use equal to. But if you have a kind of increase or decrease uh, in access control kind of concept inside your mind, then you just simply go for the increment or this decrement operator, decrement or increment. Operator. So here the access type is again same read write execute. So users are available. Access modification that you want to do that is also possible. And then what type of uh, read write or execute permission those you are supposed to modify. Those are also available. So using these three sets you can define the behavior of change mode. Okay. So if uh, pull dot text is the file so, and uh, it can be written read and executed by user okay the group and the other users cannot write or edit the file but available for read so its equivalent command will be this is it correct if the motive is this that you want to uh, modify a file access in such a way that the group and the other user cannot write or edit the file but available for read operation then they have given this command is it correct earlier what was the access earlier this was the kind of access here okay but this is a different scenario so that's why here already write permission was not here you can see here four 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 means already there was no write permission Okay, so this is a different context and this is a different context. Okay, so suppose this is a different pool file or the new version of pool file in which earlier there was a permission for group and other users also to have the right uh, means to have the right permission. Now they want to remove that permission. They want to restrict the group and other users to not have the right permission. Then what they did change mode group and other are not supposed to have not means decrement they are decreasing the access okay and how they are decreasing they are decreasing with respect to 
right permission so go means a group and other users will not have the right permission now with respect to pull dot text understood now the another example that uh, user only capable to read file group available to write and others can read and write except execute the file read it again read it again and see it observe it okay and tell me whether this particular command is right or wrong i told you that uh, when you want to just uh, simply state the access you don't want to increment or decrement then you are supposed to have the equal to operator so here they are saying users group and others three things and their respective permission changes are also listed it's correct it's correct yes because uh, they have so, so if, yeah um if we want to remove two things do we just instead write equal to the third thing or can we remove two things could you please repeat shit um right uh, if we want to remove two things do we instead just write equal to the third thing or can we remove two things if you want to remove two things then just uh, no, after this particular thing means uh, for example here what they have did plus a w so here you can write plus r w means oh, okay. read and write both permission you can give and if you want to uh, means uh, remove those access then here simply you can write for example with respect to other users you don't want to allow them to execute as well as write permission so just to simply write o minus w x Fine. So if, if instead of O minus X, I wrote um, O equals R W, would that do the same thing? Yes, same okay. thing. Okay. The means a kind of uh, same thing. It means uh, you must have uh, heard of the concept of. Uh, if I remember, uh, there is a principle of duality. If I correctly remember, yes, it's a duality principle of yes. So that is uh, that works in binary system. Okay. So in duality means. Uh, how you can write the same thing in a different manner you can write that uh, o is equal to w r o is equal to w r that is similar to o minus x okay but the interpretation of command will always depend on the current uh, specifications those are already defined by the user okay so because you cannot have that you are running the same command again and again and you will get the same kind of response because it might possible that over the period of time the somebody some other user or uh, you only have changed the permission of your files and that's why running the same command again and again will not give you the same kind of response okay moving forward so here another example see it and uh, check whether the command is correct or not if for a file the user can read write and execute members of your group can read and execute and others may only read it then the command is it's very simple okay so just they have assigned the permission okay the kind of doubt you were asking sure so similar thing the other kind of interpretation that i was discussing just two minutes before that if you don't want to remember the binary kind of system okay with respect to permissions then don't remember that particular table or binary system you just simply remember that four a weightage of four is reserved for read operate read operation okay and weightage of two is reserved for write operation and one for execute then zero stands with no permission zero means nothing is there four means read only two means write only one means execute only but if there is a combination for example here the group want to have 
the read and execute we have given the permission of read and execute to the group users so then what is the weightage for read four what is the weightage for execute one so here this particular statement is equal to the numeric value of octal five okay similar way read write execute means four plus two plus one so you can define this as seven so just simply change mode seven 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 it means that you have given all sorts of permission to owners also to groups also to other users also okay so similar way here you can see that they have given the same sort of thing here that if you want to have a combination of permission then you can just simply add their respective weightages okay and then whatever is the final value that will decide their respective access okay now if it is the command change mode 754 my friend then what type of access the owner has owner obviously has the read write and execute what is the permission for group anybody and read and execute read and execute yes and uh, for others it's a simply read okay so in this way means it's a quite simple now you must have understood because we have discussed the alphanumeric form also and the octal form also there are different interpretations also their combination of accesses also okay so in this way you can have uh, all sorts of uh, access control whatever you want to have inside your system okay now one last thing that we have discussed with the concept of attributes related permissions and uh, how to use those permissions to have a proper access control inside your system over your files okay now if you want to change the ownership because it's also possible that uh, uh, means uh, somebody was having the total control means uh, some system administrator got changed okay people do frequently shift companies so here the ownership is supposed to get transferred means uh, it might be possible okay the person got shifted means somebody is may say sir person got shifted shift means position is same only some other person will join with the same credentials okay but if you want to change the ownership you want to hand over things to somebody else then you need to use the change ownership means ch own command then this change ownership command ch o w n is written over here okay so you can see and you can use it in this particular fashion file name and the other user that you want to hand over to change the file ownership for a group you can see here change group okay and obviously you will not change with respect to other because others don't have any particular any kind of means guests normally don't have any sort of access means ownership so that's why only with respect to the actual owner and with respect to you have these two commands change ownership and the change group so you can control the number of members inside a particular group and then you can change the whole permission in a single shot you don't need to change the permission for every user you just need to change the group permission so that's why group permission become important okay so in this way we have discussed it today's lecture it was a kind of short lecture and i deliberately kept it short if you want to have any sort of doubt or questions please do ask